let's check if we're live um let's see let's bring up the chat and see if everything is coming up i'm looking um, down i'm looking down i know we always tend to be are but we're always checking if we're live let's have a look yeah if you've uh, if you are joining us do say a little hello as we as we always see the numbers pop in let's have a little look then um as we go in on dave yeah nice to be back in on a tuesday today let's have a look is oh we've only got let's have a little look just check we're definitely live um because Hang on, lauren's cool. typing lauren is typing we're live really sure yeah yeah <laughs> great stuff well look uh, yeah if you have joined us and you're just joining us um do give us a, a little hello uh, a little big thumbs up or a little emoji whatever it is uh, you you do to say hello in your neck of the woods um it could be what well, well, i was gonna say bore da but that's this morning um but yeah yeah do say hello anyway it's great to be back dave another tuesday tune in i know um, yes i can i can see people slowly uh trickling in rachel yeah. shona do you know what i nearly said it then i nearly oh, yeah. said it the wrong way and that would have been another pint um yeah i i, I tell you what i i'm really terrified of the ever trekkers meeting me on mass it's gonna cost me like say, a grand the next um the next time we all catch up and, and go for a hike whether it be a training weekend or on a trip i think dave you're gonna be pretty skinny with all the yeah, all no, the yeah. I mean, especially brian i mean geez you know yeah you know well i mean we've got we've got brain um mcalpine there um we've got simon <laughs> um we've got james uh james blue <laughs> i'm just we've trying to get Gavin. all of these we've got, got sital sital great to great to see you drop in mate we've got rebecca um always good to see evertrack on the live uh when they come in um hey spuds on the uh spuds on the live wow mate he's uh he's, he's taking some time off brilliant I hope the knee was fine after the skiing trip. Um, yeah, Dave, how is the knee? Knee was fine, mate. Yeah, no, I um, yeah, you, you know, you didn't, no one saw me on a slope at all, mate. I was um, you know, what do they say? I'm enjoying the apre. You were um, enjoying the apre, yes. I was. Yeah, uh, I was I'm known as the. Slopes. I'm the king of apre. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, no, it's great to be back, guys. Great to be back. And yeah, t today we were we were sort of I'm an hour and about today because, you know, we always want to, kind of chat about things that you know hopefully useful to to everyone you know all of our ever trackers and um you know we've got people on trips right now which is amazing it's always good when we're doing a tuesday tune in and we've got people yep. on, on the slopes not skiing um <clears throat> on the slopes of killy we've got um uh, two people um just to send in uh, i think actually uh, the back of a hotel now we've got another few people that are actually on the way up um so it's always great dave isn't it to do this yep. as people are on trips and you know we're really excited to hear our they're all getting on um very very close to um our kind of early spring season it's kind of weird we, we kind of brought it forward a little bit um just from a numbers perspective but we got a um you know a lot of trips coming in the spring now and we thought with everything that's going on obviously we've been traveling over the last four or five days um you know so you kind of get a feel with you know what travel is actually like you know currently um especially when it comes to borders flights um you know some, some of the hoops you've got to jump through so we thought, you know, as we were on the way back uh, from the airport yesterday, we had a little chat about, well, what, you know, what, what's relevant right now? And we know, uh, you know with Evertrek is going out to Tanzania, um, you know, with how it was in the autumn when people got over to Nepal. We thought, let's, let's chat about that, because I know we've had a lot of questions lately on the live, I think last week, and also by email around like, OK, if I've got to, you know, should I take this test with me? Um, what's it like when I arrive? You know, what's the kind of the, the, the processes? And we thought it's just good just to have a you know a conversation around that and so if there's any questions you know around anything like that you know just just drop it in and um me and dave will will, will work it out and and, and yep. chat about it dave and, and that's what we were thinking right yeah exactly because i'll be honest <clears> with you i was a little bit sort of oh god what have i you know it's a nightmare traveling there you know but actually it's not that difficult i mean broadly yeah. speaking the entry requirements for most of the countries that we go to are the yeah. same um obviously myself and andy we did a little sort of uh, high altitude trip to the pyrenees um and it was really nice to go over there because um shall i do it and i discovered you don't need a pair <laughs> like you can go to the pyrenees with only one um yeah no. that's shocking dave i I, mean, I laughed in the car but i'm not sure yeah i'm gonna get on the line yeah i can actually <clears throat> i think i can hear it through the window actually that that's what's happening <laughs> but no and it was um yeah we were thinking like um, and it's funny me and andy were sat there and um you know we were you know you have to go on and 
your phone and you have to do some locator forms and yeah. download some um, vaccination forms and things like that. But actually, to be fair, it's not that difficult and it's not that stressful. Um, and so we wanted to just basically give you guys a little update on what flying was like, because many of you are going to be going through that um, imminently. Um, yeah, so nice. that's what we're going to talk about. Flights yeah. and rules, basically. Yeah, some good uh, Rich Brown, uh, Tuesday tune in first timer, mate. Yeah, well done. Welcome. Um, yeah, welcome as part of the community. And yeah, we're here every Tuesday, um, unless it's, you know, Christmas or... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, Bry says, my ears are bleeding at Andy's joke, uh, although tumbleweed from Shona. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, didn't go I think it was, uh, I like how you got the blame, and, um I, I, It's okay, mate. It's, it's, all, it's all my fault. It's good. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but no, it's, uh, yeah, some good comments there. George, nice to see you all. Been a while. Off to the Adventure Travel Show this year. Yes, we are, George. Um, yeah, they've moved it again because of COVID. It was meant to be, because oh, it's usually in January, isn't it? Um, you know, during normal times. Uh, last time we did it was yeah January. The events travel show was January 2020, just for all uh, all kicked off, right? But yeah, we're definitely back. Um, I think it's been pushed till um, to April or May. April, Dave, isn't it or May? Something like that. They, yeah. They've moved it so far. Yeah. Um, yeah, but certainly, <clears throat> yeah, we're always going to be there. We always give it a great. Um, it's always a great time to catch up with Ever Trekkers, um, not just virtually but in person. Um, so yeah, certainly we're, we're at the Adventure Travel Show. We're also at Keswick as well, Mountain Festival. Um, which we did for the first time last year. Loved it. Met so many. <clears throat> um, met so many people. Um, yeah, so many ever trackers uh, at uh, obviously up north in Keswick, uh, in the Lake District. But uh, yeah, as always, we're, we're at the Adventure Travel Show. Um, yeah, Marky V. As always, he's on it with the dates. Um, yeah, is is now in April. Yeah, the Excel. Yeah, they moved as well to the London Excel. I know. Yeah, we'll, I was used we'll, to we'll it. See what that's like. Which is a little bit disappointing, personally, because we have um, mm. a, one of our favourite pubs is just down the road <laughs> from the Olympia in Kensington. Um, it so it's going to be a bit annoying to have to travel to that pub because it's almost <laughs> a ritual for me and Andy to get a pint there um, before we it kick is. off the show. But um, yeah, no, really looking forward to it. To be honest with you. We've been really missing that the last few years, I think. I know we did yeah. do Keswick, which was really nice. Um, but obviously not doing the adventure travel show because that's always a great time. I've met yeah. so many people personally just at the adventure travel show. Um, it, is great. it was uh, a little bit more of that um, than even in Keswick, I think. Keswick, we met quite <clears> a few <throat> people, but it's nothing like the adventure travel show. It's like a conveyor belt of ever trackers. Um, <laughs> it was, yeah. Yeah, it was. it's great. But, it and, great. yeah. Yeah. Flying. Uh, yeah, I, I think, first off, because, um, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering where to start, but essentially, yeah, we've, we've obviously uh, adventure travel and go into these places you've got to travel. But one thing I've kind of thought about, um, you know, and I honestly believe is 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 eighty percent similar, is that sometimes it does come down to you know when you're traveling to these places, we can we we can we can view it in, in two ways. I think um, you can see it as, you know, um, okay, we've got all these hoops to jump through. It is it does have that little bit of maybe stress and anxiety, or <clears throat> we can see it that that's travel, because I think and and having traveled to a few you know, random places, there's always been hoops you've had to jump through. There's always been forms you've got to fill out, visa applications you've got to get. Um, you know, sometimes there's vaccinations you have to get before going to places. I mean, Tanzania is the one, you know, you're looking at yellow fever. First time I went there in 2008, you, you weren't allowed in unless you had that vaccination. And so you had to mentally kind of process that. And and I think now, yeah, you know, it is a, um, you know, a choice to go to these places. But this, I, I kind of, if we can break it down into, okay, there's, there's hoops you've got to jump through, but there's always been hoops. It's part of adventure travel. If we kind of, if we can kind of get on board with that, then it's not really that different. You know, it's just yeah. as long as we know what we've got to do, right, then it's it's not going to be, um, you know, hopefully it minimizes the stress a little bit. And that's what we thought today. If we can at least talk about a few of the things that then it's, you, you kind of have a, have a little bit of inkling of what's coming. I mean, because we can all Google the reviews, um, not reviews. The, the the restrictions and, and what you need to do before you go into these countries. You can leave us a review. <laughs> as long as it's positive. I don't know why I said review. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but no, you, you, there's so many restrictions out there. You're like, oh, what do I actually do? You know, and we always have to uh, say this. Obviously, you know, all of our information comes from the same place that if you Googled it, you would find. Yeah. Um, you know, like, for instance, you know, what, what vaccinations you need to go into a country. Um, your visa and how you apply for that is all available on Google and you can find that out. 
um, you know, to any country, uh, you know, what you need to do. And obviously the FCO website in terms of, you know, what the what the rules are in place before you go there. But, you know, hopefully we, we can we can provide a little bit of advice on it. And yeah, it is a little bit different, but it doesn't make it doesn't mean it's worse, I would say. No. Because then it's it's adventure travel. It's it's it is part of that journey. I know I again sound like a broken record, but travel is always gonna have certain things that are happening and going on. And if we approach it in that way, that yeah, it's um you know, it is it is gonna be there are gonna be things that you won't do on the average flight to Spain. You know, it, it, when you when you go in, uh, you know, to, to, to these far off destinations, there will be new things you'll have to do. But that is part of the journey. And I think if you can accept that, um, you know, it will be uh, maybe a bit more easier to deal with, Dave. I don't know. Dave, what are your thoughts on that? I know we yeah. I talked about that yesterday. No, I think you're right. Yeah, because um, I'll be honest with you, I was, <clears throat> you know, when we went on our little trip, I was a little bit sort of like, oh, just dreading the yeah. bureaucracy of travel but i was quite surprised by how set up the world is for this type of travel yeah. and that's because like you've said and it has always existed you know we've always like traveling has always been a bureaucratic exercise really look yeah. at the amount of time you spend in an airport i've spent longer in airports than i have actually on the plane it's yeah. baffling but at the same time it's really worth it and one of the things i realized yesterday was that actually you know yes there are a few more hoops that we've got to jump through it's yeah. not like we didn't have any before it's just one or two more tasks that you need to do yeah. and um yeah it's it's so much more you know when, when we got there and we got through the airport i was like oh it was done it's great <laughs> yeah, know, all of a yeah. sudden it feel, all of a sudden it feels easy mm. and uh and i can tell you that just i haven't been out of the country since pre-covid yeah um barely been out of wales um so actually to go like i said to some snowy mountains throw in some altitude. I feel great today. I mean, I don't, my ear doesn't work because of the, uh, the, the plane hasn't quite equalized yet, but, um, but no, honestly, it was so good and important. And I realized, and it reminded me how important travel is. And it's one of those things where going to places like Nepal, like Tanzania, there's a reason why you guys want to go there. And it's not because it's just around the corner and it's not because it's the easiest place in the world to get to. Exactly. It's because it is yeah. risky in some respects. Yeah even the trip itself. If I could teleport you to Tanzania, um, mm. once you leave that hotel and you step foot on Kilimanjaro, you're taking a risk. You're taking yeah. a risk with your well-being, you know, with the altitude, with the success of the trip. Um, and that's what kind of makes it exciting. And if you yeah. throw all of this that we've got to do now into that sort of mindset bracket, then, you know, it just makes travel so much easier. I mean, we can also, you know, we can give you some specifics as well about what it's like to actually travel, what's required for each country and things like that, because it's relatively straightforward. And I know we've got a couple of questions as well about visas yeah. and flights, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do our best to make sure all of that's helpful. Yeah. I'm lucky that I've got Andy when I go on trips, because I said to Andy the other day, oh, it's great, we should go on another trip. And I said, it, to be fair, it's easy for me. I don't do anything. He hands me my boarding pass. It's like going, it's like traveling with my dad when I was a kid. Where's my boarding yeah, pass, dad. Andy? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. But you're, yeah, but you're more organized. Just the mileage. Um, <laughs> no, brilliant. No, it is, yeah, it, you know, and, and I go I go traveling with, um, you know, one of our good friends, uh, Tom. And it's great to have someone who, uh, yeah, who, who can take, who lo loves the organising. And uh, luckily, well, yeah, it was me and Dave. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the organiser. Um, and yeah, it's sometimes, um, you know, after after years and years of doing this, it's just, it's just part of the journey. It's part of the path of the course. Um, and yeah, I, I think again, I go back to what I said earlier about, um, you know, basically, it's the same as it's always been. So I've always done these storms. I've always done that. So I, I just don't see it. As, yeah. as massively massively different now obviously you know um you know i don't want that to come across as controversial obviously we're going through covid right now there hasn't always been tests that you have to do you know we, we, we there, there are things that are new um but i just you know i, I I'm, I'm trying to sort of impress really that you know it, it is a few hoops to jump through but let's not make it a a, a mountain uh, no pun intended uh you know it's it's hopefully um you know very simple thing that we can do to allow us to go to these places and you know, uh, Joel makes a good point. You know, if it was easy, everyone would do it and it wouldn't be an adventure. You know what? I, I love that, Joel. Um, yeah. Great mindset to have, mate. And yeah, it's, you know, like any anything, these 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 places we go to, I mean, I'm, I know I'm preaching to, you know, you you guys always, always you know, you, you, you're you in the, um, you're in the stadium. You, you know what adventure travel is like. 
because you're here. So I, I don't want to say I'm preaching to, you know, people who aren't. But I think, you know, it, even if there's a little bit of doubt there and, um, you know, shall I go or not because of all these things, just just know that, you know, obviously we're here to make it as, as, as you know, try and be as helpful as we can. Um, you know, I mean, we are a trekking company, you know, when we when we go to these places and all these all these ancillary things, you know, we've had to kind of adapt and try and soak up the information that we can we can help you guys because we want to make it as stress free as possible. Um but yeah, just that that's that's one of the, the, the kind of big reasons for us um, today. Because yeah. yeah, Dave, I mean, so, okay, so it's been a, um, uh, obviously it's been a while since you flew. What was it like on the plane this time? I mean, you know, as we obviously uh, taken off, you know, going, going onto a plane in the flight and then afterwards, I mean, was there anything that was, was different for you? Um, I mean, a little bit of, a little bit of, you know, um, there's, a, there's a couple of things I'll start before the flight because the the actual process of actually going through it all was really straightforward but that's because it gave myself enough time to get everything else done in advance um you know so the passenger locator forms that the, the countries you're traveling to uh, require and also your proof of vaccination and things like that and having screenshots and all these qr codes and stuff all stored on the phone um i'll tell you that was really surprisingly easy coming back less so uh, because my battery died on the plane and yeah. all of my forms were on my phone so that was a situation where thank god i sent all of my forms to andy as well yeah. so luckily i passed through without too much scrutiny um but if you know i needed to i had to call andy over but yeah that's <laughs> one thing make sure if you are traveling with all the documents on this point. that you keep it charged because i let mine die what an idiot um, and also, how many times am I preaching about power banks? And I'm the man that everybody comes to. I had a power bank for the wrong cable. It just goes <laughs> to show I'm yeah. rusty. I'm really rusty when it comes to traveling. So, yes, I am rusty and I got a few things wrong. But actually, the process of flying, the, the process of the forms you have to fill out is all very simple and it just felt familiar. Um, I didn't normally, you know, yeah, what did you have know, to be What's happened to you? I know. It's very unusual. I, for you, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I mean, yeah, like normally I arrive in country and they're like, Dave, a hydroelectric power's down. Let's plug in the anchors and get this thing moving. Yeah, you know, and um, but yeah, you're right. I um I realized that, like about 20 minutes from landing that I was in trouble and I got in my bag, pulled out the anchor power bank. Yes, what a legend I am. Pulled out the cable. What a complete idiot. <laughs> and then I had no choice then. There's nothing I could do. The phone died. But anyway, yeah. the, the actual process was pretty straightforward. And um, yeah. for return entry into the UK, you know, um, it's all there and it's all laid out really easy for you. Yeah. So when you do the passenger locator form, it tells you, you know, um, where you're coming back to, where you're coming from, what you need to do. And if you give yourself enough time to do this in advance, it makes it so much easier. Dave the and Power Yeti. <laughs> Dave the Power Yeti. Like and to be honest with you, Mick, I am looking a little bit like Phil the Power Taylor at the minute. I need to get myself to the gym. Um, but actually, yeah, that was it was really, really easy. And I think as long as you guys be a little bit prepared, don't yeah. get caught out at the airport. We've seen a few people there scrambling to find a form that perhaps they filled out, perhaps they hadn't. And you can see how it can get stressful. But honestly, it just over a coffee sat there. I was on my phone filling out the forms. Done. I did it over breakfast. Nice and easy. Doesn't yeah. have to be stressful. Um, but yeah, and actually coming back is even easier again. I thought yeah. that coming back to the UK, I'd be scrutinized because I very rarely make it through security without getting scrutinized. But I don't know why that is. Mate, they just, yeah, they just lay through. I, and I think, yeah, there's it's a couple of lessons there, isn't it? I mean, yeah, you know, you can have it printed out or on your phone if you've got sufficient battery. I mean, um, yeah, screenshots definitely the way forward. Um, yeah. You know, instead of as you're being asked, you know, through whether that's border control, whether that's when you land in the pool and they're asking for certain things and you're you're paying for your visa there, and if you haven't got it before, you know, there's there's lots of things. Um, just have any uh, to do some screenshots. It's a lot easier, and they accept it. Um, they yeah. don't need the official PDFs. Um, you know, and yeah, just just one um, Gavin there just dropped in. I mean, um, obviously, I know we got loads of questions, and we'll come through them, but. I'll answer this one straight away because can you do the forms in advance or is it handed to you at the airport to do? Um, that's for, if for any, I, I always advise doing before you get there because some of them are, do take a while to fill in, like, you know, you have 15, 20 minutes sometimes, um, you know, just so you've got, you know, your flight information, your dates, things like that. Um, I always do it in advance, Gav. I, I, you, you could probably get away with it, mate, if you forget and you have to do it at the airport. 
Um, but just from a, a speed point of view, um, I, I kind of recommend doing it before. If you're talking about visas, um, there are certain countries, if you haven't got a visa before you arrive, that you can you can just get the forms as you arrive. So, yeah, it's not like you're going to be caught out. I think some play, sometimes you're on a flight and they actually hand you the forms and you can do them on the plane yeah. before you land. Um, depends on the airline. But I've had that a few times. Um, first couple of times I went to Nepal, they give the forms on the plane and then it's easy then when you go through if you haven't got your visa done before you arrive. So, yeah, depending on what you're filling out there, mate. Um, but, yeah, good. <laughs> I love mix. Airport, away. Uh, always, always deep breath security. Yeah, you do get, I think in, in, in all, you know, in any walk of life, you always get people who um, are a bit more stickler for the rules than other people, you know, and, and it's yeah. luck sometimes. Dave, the person next to you yesterday, as you were going through security, oh, yeah. they didn't ask you for any, you know, passionate locator form didn't ask to see a vaccination but then the person next to you they asked for everything right yeah yeah it was, you know, uh, it was that's the way it works yeah it's strange i'm not entirely sure you know what their criteria is um yeah. i fall into that criteria for checking normally nine times out of ten <laughs> this time they only checked my bag as it went through the uh the scanner they didn't actually search me which was uh which was nice um yeah. but yeah no it, it is one of those but uh, i think it's all about doing your research. We can help you with that as well, because obviously we're quite familiar with the countries. We try to stay up to date as possible. Yeah. Um, sometimes there can be a little bit of a disconnect between what the FCO and the .gov website say and what the situation yeah. on the ground is. So sometimes, you know, you can do a little bit of extended research. So you can ask us, you know, happy to help. A lot of people always, you know, the, the embassies are really easy to speak to. Sometimes yeah. calling the Nepali embassy, uh, the Nepali embassy, <laughs> the Nepalese embassy, you can spend a little bit of time on the phone trying to discuss, uh, you know, but, um, you know, certain requirements and he they can help you with the visa and things <laughs> like that. Um, but yeah, I think giving yourself as much time as you can in advance of your trip to do these little forms yeah. takes all the stress away. And I don't mean reduces the stress, I mean, takes it all away. Yeah um there was nothing that i didn't know the answer to there's nothing that i was thinking oh what do they mean by that it was all relatively straightforward and easy so um yeah. and that goes for you know not just the, the the new checks you know like your vaccine and things like that it also goes to do with just the normal visas and things like that give yourself enough time in advance to actually go through the process and it's super easy and yeah that's yeah. what we did whilst um i mean <clears throat> whilst uh, i think shona was asking about um uh, for anyone who's traveled with a, a, conne a connection. So, yeah, normally, like, if you go into Tanzania or you go into Nepal, um, South America, there'll be a, you know, you, you can't, it's rarely you can fly direct, um, you know, especially to Nepal and Tanzania. Um, and uh, essentially, then you, you're transferring through an airport. Um, now, most of the time, because the transit area is completely different kind of setup, majority of the time, all they check are your bags, as in um, your, your, your the one you yeah. take on the plane, for some reason, because... This would have already been gone through security, you know, if you're leaving the UK. Um, but they always like to do it. Um, so that's normally the one thing they will check, as well as your boarding pass. All the, the ancillary stuff, like vaccination certificate, um, you know, or proof of a, um, you know, a, a recent test. Um, uh, as far as we know, they've never asked for that information because yep. you would have been asked that before you checked in, or at least you would have uploaded it or done it at check-in initially. You don't, when you're doing a, a transit, um, flight unless you take your bags and you stay in for a day if you if you are traveling through without without leaving the airport you won't have to do that again if you are leaving the airport yeah. I, I, I probably guess that you would have to do that again uh, because it's almost like you're checking in fresh yeah uh, exactly i mean yeah from all of our research the um you know the vaccinations is a requirement for entering the country so they do those checks at immigration if you're not going through immigration and you're just in the transit area um you're not you haven't technically entered the country you know you haven't been stamped and you haven't got a visa you're not um you're not in so yeah they just do standard personal security checks and your luggage and things like that but don't actually do anything else yeah yeah um yeah so what do you think and do we dive into some cues yeah yeah we've got a few haven't we um I mean, I mean as well obviously you know quite a lot of people on the live now yeah drop in some questions if you've got anything so if you go in this spring maybe uh um you know, you're planning uh, obviously on on your trip uh, you know maybe you've got some sort of burning questions yeah do drop them in guys that's what we're here for we can we can answer these obviously we've got a few already um <laughs> i don't know why i was going down um because we've got a little internal whatsapp team and all i saw was novak djokovic um 
<laughs> is, is that because we're talking about borders? I reckon it's been put in the WhatsApp. Uh, I, I tell you why. It's because there's a question that's come in from Lindsay. Um, okay. And uh, it's a, it's actually quite an interesting one that I'll take on now because we were yeah. discussing this yesterday with um, our team in Nepal. Um, so Lindsay has it said that the NHS uh, advice is not to do a PCR test within 90 days um, as you could still test positive. This is if you've had COVID. Yeah. Um, her trip is within 90 days. Yeah. Does a previous infection negate the requirement for a PCR to be able to travel or do you still need a PCR test in which you run the risk of yeah. not being allowed to travel um, wow. if it's okay. positive? So yeah. it's a big question and it is a little issue that's kind of come up. Yeah. Now, I'll answer it the best I can, and I'll hopefully give you some hope. So, yes, there is an issue where if you test positive um, and you do a PCR test within 90 days of that positive test, it could still throw up a positive. That's yeah. because the antibodies and whatnot are still in your body, even though you're not infectious. So we spoke to our team in Nepal about this issue yesterday, and I know also um, there are some other countries around the world that are having the same issue. Now, it depends on the individual country, and I'm not aware of any. This is where Novak Djokovic comes from, the Novak Djokovic, um, you know, uh, waiver. So what they're going to be looking into, and this is in Nepal, Tanzania, well, not Tanzania, but Nepal, um, is whether or not they are able to accept maybe um, an initial sort of confirmation of your first test, you know, so they know that you've had it within 90 days um, and we're waiting to find out what sort of situation that, that, yeah. that or what resolution that's going to offer. So I haven't got a definitive, yes, you can use the Novak Djokovic waiver um, or yeah. no, you can't travel. At the moment, the, the, Nepali, um, are looking in, the Nepalese are looking into this specific yeah. issue and we hope to have a, um, an answer pretty soon, which we'll be yeah. putting out to everybody. But um, yeah, yeah. Hes hesitant, to the, it, yeah hesitant to call it the Novak Djokovic waiver. Um, because technically he's also unvaccinated. Um, but you have to be vaccinated in order to enter Nepal. Yeah. Um, that means two vaccinations. Um, they're not asking yet, or nobody's asking, I believe, for a booster. Two is considered fully vaccinated. Yeah. If you are fully vaccinated and you had COVID within 90 days, but you're now technically COVID free and out of isolation, I suspect that they'll make a pathway for people yeah. to to enter the country because there's no reason why you can't. It's just a um, uh, you know, a technical problem with testing. So hopefully that'll be a case. Um, yeah. And we'll, get that, and we, we'll be putting that out there. Yeah, exactly. I, I think um, certainly because there's discussions, I mean, you know, I know, I know we're not the only company to be uh, thinking about this because we, we were chatting about it yesterday. And um, yeah, certainly there's, you know, the, at the end of the day, these countries like Nepal, um, you know, like Tanzania, I mean, Tanzania has different rules, but they, they want you to go there. Um, you know, they're trying to work on the best way. And the fact is that when you've got, um, you know, when it's still in, in, in your blood, essentially, and it shows up, it doesn't mean you've got it, as in that you can transmit it. I mean, I'm not sounding like I'm a doctor or anything, you guys, I'm just from what we read, um, you know, but and it's, you know, they, they, they'll, they'll make, they'll make it, like you said, like Dave said there, they'll make a pathway to make it easier for you to get in um, because it's not bringing any more danger to the country unless you do actually have it, um, you know, but it is. Uh, it is something that's on our radar because it's it's a very good question, you know, because obviously it's been been brought to everyone's attention with uh, yeah. what happened in Australia. But, you know, I, I think I think one thing is that Nepal, Tanzania, Peru, uh, just thinking about these countries, um, you know, they're not as strict as Australia. I think they've got a um, uh, at the moment, uh, you know, they, they are you know they, they found that what they, they've made their rules and that's what they're sticking to. I think yeah. in Nepal, they're, they're certainly. Um, you know, different entity altogether. But also, uh, as well, I think the um, the Australia situation is slightly different because yeah. he's uh, he's an unvaccinated person who's yes. getting a waiver for entering the country unvaccinated. Yeah. Um, we're not. What <clears throat> we're doing is getting a waiver for a PCR um, because you had test because you tested positive within yeah. the previous ninety days. As long as you're, I imagine, that as long as you're not infectious that you've passed your isolation periods and stuff like that, that you, um, they'll, they'll make a pathway and, and hopefully, yeah. you know, that'll be sorted. Um, nice. Awesome. Dave. Um, yeah, just look in. So let's have a little look, just going through, uh, Lee Davy was asking, uh, not sure if we answered this already, but, um, yeah. Can I ask about visa now for Nepal? Uh, do I have to do it online at the moment? 
Um, yeah, and it's a good question. Lee. You can you can do it um, online, or if you, if you're close to London, or you fancy a trip to London, you can go to the embassy there. Um, yeah, so you can certainly do it. It's, it's a lot quicker to do it online because then when you arrive, you haven't got to go through the rigmarole of, of setting that up. Um, you know, it's it's a lot it's a lot quicker rather than doing it in country. But you know, if you do that, um, you know, it does take an hour or two sometimes to go through the visa process, um, especially if it's if it's a little bit busy. Um, you know, I've been there and arrived in Kathmandu, and then I'm there for a couple of hours, sorting forms, queuing up. Uh, there's, it's not just you fill in your visa, then you go through, and then they stamp your visa. There's like a few different processes. Uh, it's, it's kind of quite strange. Um, I know they've done a lot of developments in, in Kathmandu Airport since they renovated it. So yeah, uh, but when it comes to Nepal um, visa, yeah, you can you can you can do that. Um, you know, as long as it is all good on the on the website. And as Mark said, um, the visa application system is not working. Mark, um, yeah, thanks for telling us. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, I'm sure it will be working soon. I think it might be a, a just a temporary thing because um, it has been working. But I think yeah, yeah definitely, um, it's you know, hopefully they'll they'll start working. I'd say if you go in October, you you've obviously got plenty of time as well. Um, you know, until you go, and like if it doesn't work and you aren't able to do it. You are able to get to, uh, uh, you know, get to London uh, and visit the embassy. You can do it when you arrive. Um, yeah. You know, again, part of the journey, right? Yeah, they're still doing. Yeah, like visa on arrival for those that are fully vaccinated. Yeah. Um, but as far as I was aware, I don't know whether this mark is an individual issue. Have you heard of any more people that have had the same thing? Because mm. I've spoken to quite a number of people recently who have managed to kind of go through the process. It's not a completely online process. So you go to the point where all the forms are and that are filled out. Then I can't remember how Pat whether you submit or not. I haven't done it in a while. But then you have to print off the forms, get a postal order, and post them to the embassy with your passport. Yeah. Um, it's not completely online. There is um, a manual aspect to it, which is the posting. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, I know. I know. Um, a bit of a frog in my throat. So let's have a quick look now. So yep. um, so we've answered that with Marky V. So Mick Hamilton, is it going, Mick boy? Yeah, hey, Mick. Um, Island Peak question. Um, we hey. don't talk about Island Peak on here, Mick, you know that. Um, but yeah, you understand the permits required. You have to supply a photo for the permit. No, it's fine, Mick. So what will happen with anyone doing Island Peak, Mera Peak, where an official climbing permit is needed? Um, as part of the normal booking to Nepal, anyway, you have to send me your um, flight details and a copy of your passport. The yeah. passport I, is used to organize your Lukla flights, but it's also used to organize the um, the summit permits and the, the entry to the national park permits and stuff like that. All of those things are all uh, arranged for you. So, Mick, you can just chill out, relax, and climb the mountain. Yeah, he'll uh, just keep hydrated on the mountain, Mick. Um, you know, it's important, right? Uh, yeah, but your trip to uh, Italy looked fantastic. Um, yeah, I was very, um, very jealous of that. That ice climbing looked amazing, mate. But uh, yeah, we'll have to have to have a catch up and you give me more info on that. It looked great. Um, but yeah. yeah, good question though, because um, I know historically that's it's changed over the years. Like the very first time I went to Nepal, uh, was it about six, seven years ago now? Um, you had to take these little, um, you know, the uh, passport photos you get in like supermarket. You had to take them. And they used to stamp them to your permit. It's changed now, um, you know, like obviously with you guys, if you're with us, you know, we have copies of your passport, information, that just is all that's needed now. It's a lot easier, um, yep. you know, for anything like trekking permits, climbing permits, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's it's certainly changed a little bit. But uh, yeah, can't wait to finally have you on a trip, Mick. It's been, God, it's been, it's been ages, isn't it? I know Mick's been a big part of the community for, for a number of years now, but uh, can't wait to do Island Peak. Um, Sorry, Dave, what's the next question? I'm just going through now. Um, uh, yeah, no worries. So uh, Ramona has asked, um, yeah. where am I going? Where am I and Chris going on safari after Killy? Um, I thought you would know, Ramona, but okay. <laughs> um, you're going to the Serengeti National Park in Ngorongoro Crater. Um, yeah, which is really cool. Um, both myself and Andy have been to, we've been to Ngorongoro and... Um, uh lake manyara i think we went to those two but yeah i haven't been to serengeti before but i've been to ngorogoro it's great man you go to this oh, giant um i mean um they call it a crater but it's actually a giant caldera from um yeah. an old ex uh, extinct like mega volcano and you can go onto the ridge and the ridge of it goes up to like two and a half thousand meters we saw like wild elephants lions that gave us a bit of a x-rated display um yeah it was pretty cool man i loved it there uh, oh and also 
um, little tip if you do go to these places, they have these black kites, they're birds of prey, and they hang around where everyone eats their lunch. Yeah. And me and Andy were sitting there eating a bit of chicken, having a chat, and boom, they'll swoop down and try and grab it from you. Oh, yes. Uh, but their talons are like razors, <clears throat> so don't play with them. Just eat in the car or <laughs> undercover. Because uh, the guide was telling us a story about um, a Russian tourist who put a bit of chicken on his head, Ooh, stood yeah. like that. The I bird mean... came down and practically scalped him. Um, that was an end of day tour for him. So, yeah. Um, there you are, Ramona. Don't do that. <laughs> just just reading what Bryce saying there. Like, Mick Hamilton, have you done Island Peak yet? Ask him for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those two. Um, yeah, uh, Lauren as well, who's on the comments, she has just put, uh, going back to visas, guys. Yeah, we've got a, a useful um, article we wrote with some sort of finer links and things like that. Um, she's put it in there about getting your visa for Nepal. So, yeah, uh, definitely have a look at that. Um, yeah, Jordan, uh, does the NHS, uh, the Scotland app, work in Nepal? Do you print out the PDF vaccine copy to be scanned? So, Jordan, yeah, when you when it comes to, um, I don't know if you, if you caught what we were talking about at the beginning. So, if you take a screenshot, um, then they're able to scan it. That's fine. Um, different countries have different ways. Like, um, for instance, when we went to Spain and we had uh, just a, a screenshot on the mobile of the the QR code that you get on, uh, obviously, I, I, I presume on the Scotland one as well. Um, yeah. uh, they just literally scan that and, and happy days on you go. Um, other people, like when you have companies, when you're literally jumping on the plane, all they'll do is they'll look that you've got it. They won't even check your name. Like, and I'm sure with Nepal, um, you know, as much as I love Nepal, uh, you know, some of their processes are literally quite slack. So, yeah, I'm sure it won't be as strict as that. It's good to be prepared, though. But if you have screenshots and if you if you get a PDF version and even if you email it to yourself and you've got it available on your phone, that's fine. If you want to print it out just in case, that's also fine. Um, but just just to know that probably a screenshot is fine if you keep your phone charged, Dave, right? Yeah, Shona, um, our resident Scottish person, has said that you can't screenshot it from the app, then just download it, screenshot it from a PDF or something like yeah. that, um, or even get someone else to take a picture of it on the phone or something like that. Um, that's probably against some form of security, but I've done it before when I've not been able to do that. But um, yeah, as long as you've got a, an accessible copy of it, whether yeah. that's paper, print, or um, whatever, then yeah, that's the most important thing. Um, having a quick look now, so... yeah. Um, so we had a look, so we've sorted Ramona out. Uh, Rebecca, Butterflies and Bees. Um, hey. well, she said, going to BBC in October, you certainly are. Um, however, where do you stand as you've had two jabs but not having a booster due to problems arising from the injections? Um, uh, my understanding at the moment is that um, the country is only asking and for yeah. two jabs, which is classed as fully vaccinated. Um, I don't believe there's any requirement for the booster. Um, again, I speak to the team pretty much every week about these sort of requirements. If there's any change, we'll certainly let you know. But at the moment, yeah, you're fine. Consider yourself fully vaxxed. Yeah, definitely. And it does, you know, the, the, there are some sort of finer rules. I think it's uh, you have to have your, your vaccination within a certain time. Um, so obviously, as time moves on, I know that will change. But I also think, um, you know, if you have had a reaction to it before and then, you know, you, you're kind of having, um, you know, obviously not having the booster, um, you know, I'm sure there'll be something where you can have to explain why you haven't had the booster. If it came to, if it comes to it, I know that there's going to be some exceptions like that that would be able to be managed um, because I know that you're not the only one um, for that to happen. And um, yeah, I'm sure it will. It will definitely be uh, helpful. And I think an alien has just landed in your shed and is going to beam <laughs> you up. I think is what I've just heard. <laughs> is that what it sounds like? Yeah, yeah. To me, anyway. I got down there. It's literally just charged up. Oh, um, nice. Hopefully, nice. I'll go within about 30 seconds. So, apologies, guys. I'm not leaving this planet. I'm still staying here. I'm not getting beamed up. That's fine. Amazing. Uh, so, Paul Dewhurst, yeah. how's it going, Paul? Hey, Paul. Um, oh, man, it's been a long time since I met Paul. I remember him and, uh, yeah, he was on the training weekend and um, he's a bit of a runner. I think you did a, did you do a marathon recently and hurt your foot, Paul? You need to be more careful with your trip coming up, my friend. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> Um, but yeah, can you get the Nepali visa at the embassy face to face or is it all online only? Yeah. Um, you can get it um, face to face in the visa uh, office, the embassy, which is in Kensington in London. Um, it's one of the things I actually recommend for people like maybe Mark EV are having some difficulties online. 
Um, sometimes it's easier just to take the plunge, jump on a trainer in the car and go to London and just walk in there with your passport and some money and, and get the visa. I know some people that have done it. My father did it and it's quick in and out. It's a really quick process. Nice. Um, <laughs> Dave Rimmington sounds like it needs new batteries. It's quietened down now. Um, yeah, I got a uh, sort of little, got what they call it. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's called like a blade refrigerator keg and uh, it sits on top of the fridge and it allows you to, to pour a pint. Um, it's nothing in there yet, but it's 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 cooling. It's getting nice and cool, so you can put a keg in. Uh, so apologies on that. Yeah, um, that's because I'm, uh, as you can probably tell, working from home. Uh, so I'm in the yak again. Um, yeah, my little one uh, Ellie's got COVID at the moment. So yeah, we're um, uh, obviously come home to that, and yeah, have to work from home for for the foreseeable. Um, but yeah, oh, Rebecca, no worries, mate. I'm glad um, that that helps. Um, obviously, that's what we're here for. Um, you know, can't wait to um, to have you on a trip, mate. That'd be brilliant. Uh, Mark Toy, Mark, long time no see. Um, do we get uh, LFT in Lukla before travel back to Kathmandu? If so, and it's positive, what's the procedure? Yeah, it's, um, oh, excuse me. So, Mark, currently, um, as far as I know, yeah, we don't need, uh, Dave, do we don't need an LFT no. before that internal flight, right? No, not at the moment, no. I mean, um, the, it, it, like all of these things, it's subject to change. So yeah. um, the information is accurate as of 11 minutes past one on the 18th of January. Just so anyone listening after the after the fact can know this, but no, there's no requirement for lateral flow for the Lukla flight at the moment. Um, there is a requirement to be fully vaccinated. They're not letting anyone into the into the Kumbu region who isn't, but no lateral flow. So the one issue that you just I'm just going to follow this up with the same problem. So you've got to do a lateral flow in order to enter Kathmandu International Airport on your return flight home. Um, they've introduced this as part of their safety measures. Um, we could organize it for you. It costs between 10 and $20. I think it might be $20. We'll go with 20 because that way, if it's cheaper, you'll be happy. Um, and basically, we'll organize it for you. All you have to do, basically, when you come down from the mountain, um, you'll have the test. And then you'll either get it back later that evening or the next morning. Um, so you can enter the airport and, and that'll be fine. Now, if that bad boy tests uh, positive, make yourself comfortable. Yeah. This is another part of the uh, the adventure travel. Yep. Yeah. Um, and by the way, and by the way, it's a PCR for entry into Kathmandu Airport. I mean, did I just say lateral flow? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all good as long as you can. Yeah, it's it. a PCR, and we'll yeah. organise it for you. I'm getting a, a virtual elbow in the ribs from Lauren. <laughs> um yeah and um, we'll organize it for you um and it should you should be fine you go into a very remote region where yeah. although you know there are other people there um you'll largely be staying within the own your own bubble of the trekking people you're going with yeah. and you know compared to Kathmandu and any other city is a lot less people but then essentially yeah, you make yourself comfortable and you um we'll see you in 10 days basically <laughs> <laughs> I think if anything like that happens, you know, we're, we're here to assist, guys. You know, we're not going to uh, leave you stranded. I think, um, yeah, anything that happens out of the ordinary, um, you know, Bry, who's on the live today, will know uh, when he was he was stuck in, in Kathmandu a long time ago. That was for 10 days as well, wasn't it? Although, uh, yeah. obviously, not because of um, having a positive. It was, uh, unfortunately, they shut the borders. Um, but, yeah, so we'll, we'll obviously help you if, and assist if anything like that happens. So um, we know that, unfortunately, it's a, it's a very, very sort of dynamic situation where anything can happen at any time yeah and we're you know we're obviously trying to be as flexible as we can and help you as much as we can at the end of the day you know you, you're an ever trekker you know we're not gonna just leave you do that on your own um we'll, we'll, we'll assist you and we've got a we've got a good team on the ground and, and back here as well in the uk so yeah. yeah we will look after you mark can't wait to um yeah to, to have you with us mate and uh yeah it'd be great to great to see you on a trip um yeah some, some good questions coming through though um Lee Davies trying to upload his passport to the website. Yeah, just um, uh, if, obviously if it's if it's not working, it might be a file issue. It could it could be numerous reasons. Yeah, just 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 email us info yeah. at evertrek.co.uk. So we've got a copy of that. That'd be awesome. Lee, I hope all is well, mate. Um, yeah, Lee was on a, a training weekend. Uh, feels like an eternity ago now, but I hope you and the family are well. Um, and yeah, can't wait to have you on a trip, Lee. Uh, awesome. Finally coming close. <laughs> Definitely. Um, Rich Brain has asked, what are the quarantine yeah. rules for arrival in Nepal at the moment? Is there a 10-day hotel quarantine in place? No, there's not. Nope. Um, I, this is what I mentioned earlier, where sometimes there's a discrepancy between what the FCO say about the situation yeah. on the ground in Nepal is. This, I reckon, is because a little while back, just before Christmas, 
Nepal announced that they were bringing in a quarantine, but it was a release that wasn't sort of signed off by the government. So within 24 hours, it was taken away. I suspect that the UK side hasn't updated since then. I spoke to our team, Anuj, over there in Nepal less than 24 hours ago, and he said at the moment, there's no uh, quarantine on arrival. Visa on arrival is still available for fully vaxxed people. Um, it's just the um, PCR um, uh, requirement. So you need a PCR within uh, 72 hours of arrival to get in um, and be fully vaxxed. And then to come back into the airport, another PCR, which we just talked about. So, yeah, all good, my friend. Anything changes again, we'll let you know. Nice. Um, Gavin, uh, another daft one. No, no questions, daft, Gav. Honestly, uh, it's all good. Uh, Trekking permits for the National Park in Nepal, do you get to keep them after? Uh, what do I get on montage? Yeah, but we've had some people do that before and, and, and certain um, some of the climbing permits, things like that. Um, yeah, certainly. I mean, um, normally, because again, because it's changed over the years, because they used to, uh, like I said, used to stamp, uh, sorry, used to stamp, used to staple your kind of passport photo to the permit, then you can have it. Um, I say it's changed over the years, but I'm sure, you know, honestly, mate, we, we'll just speak to the guys on the ground. Um, you know, and we can we can get that to you. You know, before you leave Kathmandu. So, yeah, I'm sure we can do that. Just just kind of remind us when you, um, you know, when you when you when you're on the ground, and and we can um, you know, we can we can do that for you. No worries. Uh, no, so asking for a friend. No, no, it's all good, Kev. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll make that happen. Um, yeah, just just let us know, or when you arrive and you're having the briefing, uh, whether that's with Anuj or one of the other guys on the ground there. Um, uh, yeah, just ask them, and they'll be able to support that after you get back from. Uh, for base camp mate but yeah good question awesome. very good question angela george re-quarantine um i think that's actually a um i think lauren's put that in for me i don't think that's part of her name or <laughs> question yeah. um you know have you ever seen anchorman you know i'll just read what you put in front of me um <laughs> wow uh, yeah so um with quarantine in mind would a 30-day visa be the best option yeah I, to be honest i always get the 30-day visa because yeah. the next one down, I think, is a 15-day visa. 15. That cuts it way too tight. Um, so yeah. get the 30-day no matter what um, circumstances you're in. I've always got the 30-day. That's way back from my very first trip in 2016 till if I had to go now. Yeah, it just covers you in case of any weird delays. Yeah. And that could be a delay due to anything. COVID, <laughs> you know, it could be a flight delay. A volcano could erupt in Iceland. You never know. Um, 30 days is always the, is always the best option. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And um, yeah, I mean, if if you did have 15, there was an issue with it, and you, you did have to quarantine, you know, I'm sure, again, uh, the, when these strange things happen, you know, we can get the team to, to kind of help assist, you know, if you do just go for the 15 days, because some people do, um, you know, which is fine. I've done 15 days in the past, um, you know, because uh, obviously there's different price. I think one's like $25, one's 40 So there's, uh, obviously this does change, but that was... Um, that's the last we heard it was it was that cost um and yeah it you know 15 or 30 if yeah you had to quarantine we can we can assist with that uh you know on the ground we'll, we'll get one of the team to, to help you um right let's have a little update well we've got we'll, we'll finish a few more we got uh what well, we got another 10 minutes left yeah um, so deborah burgess yeah. said insurance for the over 60s um yeah i think you're gonna get quite a lot of replies from people now because it comes up regular um, but uh, Lauren can also post uh, the blog about insurance companies. But I've heard Campbell Irvin. I'm not using them myself personally, but try Campbell Irvin. Yeah. Um, I've heard they're very good for the over 60s. My father uh, trekked to every space camp with me, and he was over 60, and he booked with True Traveller, and I believe still had a, a, a very competitive and good rate with those guys as well. Um, nice. I've got personal experience of True Traveller, and yeah, perfectly fine. So yeah, check out Campbell Irvin. And yeah. I believe you're going to get a couple of recommendations now, as per. <laughs> That's it, Mick. Um, I say he's used uh, Campbell Irving before. Uh, yeah, we know a lot of ever trackers who've used them. Um, you know, and yeah, Lauren, if Lauren's going to put the, the link in, it does have those three companies we talked about: um, True Traveler, Campbell Irving, and Big Cat. I think Big Cat um, sometimes because actually they're underwritten by Campbell Irving, um, is that they will refer you directly to Campbell Irving just to make it easier. Yeah. Um, yeah, and even Marky V's mentioned it as well. So yeah, it's uh, uh, <laughs> all I saw then was squirty squash. Um, that was from Shona. I think Dave Ribbington was asking about those little Dave. You know those squash um, juice things you take on a trek. What are they called I, again? I don't. I don't travel without them. They are amazing. Them. Yeah, um, I buy the. I I bought the Robinsons ones before, but I know the Aldi yeah. do the same ones as well. I forget the name, 
But um, oh, do you know what? I had one here the other day, but I can't find it. Uh, but basically, it's just like a little, it's about this big, it's a box of paracetamol, um, but slightly different <laughs> shape. And basically, it's like, wow, it's like pure concentrated squash. So like squirt, squirt, and then you've got like a nice glass of squash. It's great. So drinking as much water as you need to at altitude is always a challenge for me. You feel like a basking shark just <laughs> filtering this stuff through. And uh, having a bit of flavor just, uh, yeah, helps it, helps it go down. Um, yeah. I can't yeah. see another question, but I do have a little update with regards to um, the Morocco trip. So um, Morocco has extended the um, basically the ban on arrivals yeah. into the country until the 31st of January. Um, so I just wanted to let everyone know that case. So there's a possibility that in February um, we may go, yeah. but we need to wait until the uh, the end of this month in order to find out. So. Hopefully, guys, um, for those of you that um, I know are booked into Morocco, I'll be reaching out shortly and, um, yeah, we can crack on. Yeah, definitely. Good good shout, Dave. I think, um, yeah, we're very surprised of the the, the length of that um, closure, um, you know, because we had heaps of ever trackers due to go to Morocco, um, you know, me being one uh, in terms of going back out there and, and, and climbing up Tukal. Um, but, you know, you, you've got to roll with the punches uh, and, be again, remain flexible, I know. Mick um, mentioned he booked his flight for March. Yes, yeah, probably, probably a wise decision, Mick. Um, you know, in terms of in terms of keeping the cost down, I think as soon as, as soon as they'll open back up, you know, I think they'll become more availability with flights. They're always that always seems to be the case. I think. Um, yeah. Obviously, EasyJet tend to be a little bit more cautious than companies like Ryanair. Ryanair might have some, and they they will run them with less people on them. EasyJet, for some reason, they they just yeah. I mean, it, you know, it does come down to finances sometimes. Maybe they're just a bit more. They need to have a certain amount of people booked in. But yeah. look, yeah, we're really excited to uh, to start sending you know a lot of people to, to Morocco. You know, we got a lot of ever trackers due to go over there, and yeah, we're really excited. Um, just hope we can do that in February. But we'll we'll, we'll keep you update uh, up to date. Um, you know, as soon as as soon as we know. But yeah, we, we kind of got wide down the line now. Um, but I hope kind of you know it's been really kind of a little bit useful today. And I know that a lot of the stuff you know we've been talking about over the lives over the last you know, almost two years, um, you know, being around restrictions, rules, flights, PCR tests, you know, all this stuff. But again, I'll go back to what I said earlier is that, you know, although these are extra hoops, just be, uh, you know, try it. And I know it's difficult because, you know, any, any anything extra you've got to do, because we all want an easy life. We all want to get to where we're going to get to, um, you know, by the shortest route. But if you can, uh, you know, remain a little bit flexible with regards to you know, doing some tests, filling out some forms, you know, getting the visa done, um, you know, getting your vaccination certificate, whatever you need to, to, to make happen, um, you know, it, it will take the stress away. And, you know, having got back to traveling, I mean, you know, I've been quite fortunate to go to certain places over the last 18 months. Um, and Dave, I know you got back to it this week, this weekend. And, you know, yep. it was certainly nice. And it's just seeing those smiles, on, you know, people at airports smile on their face, you know, people in the mountains, you know, just enjoying themselves. And, Certainly, when we were in the um, Andorra this weekend, and we had the the cold air surrounded by mountain peaks, you know, snow beneath your feet, you know, feel the the crunch uh, that when you step on the snow, you know, it certainly it re almost ignited that kind of um, yep. you know, feeling to get back to the mountains, Dave. And we, we we can't wait to to have you guys on our trips. You know, no, I honestly think it changes like the chemical balance of your brain. You know, you've been we've been hearing for so long, don't travel, don't travel, don't travel. That period has now come to an end and we're able to go again. And honestly, yeah, it was just the tonic. It was I you don't realize how much you've missed it, how much you need it. If you guys have made it of you know, if your journey through life has led you to watching this life, you're a traveler, aren't you? You're an adventurer, you've got a yearning for it. And um it's time we got back to it because yeah, it was um yeah, I I needed it. It was amazing. You know, there's only so many times I can go mountain biking in a forest before the urge to actually step foot on snow and yeah. do some hiking, feel a bit of altitude, feel a little bit out of breath and just remind yourself like, yeah, this is, <clears throat> this is awesome. Exactly. Nice, Dave. Yeah, it's great. Just seeing some comments there. Diane, it was awesome skiing. Thanks, mate. It was, uh, yeah, great to be back on the slopes since pre-COVID. Um, yeah, and Tom, Tom Massetto, obviously big, big, uh, big character on our, on our community and on our Ever Evertrek group. Um, flown eight times since middle of October. Wow, mate, you've been around. Uh, yeah, filling in fours becomes normal, and um, it's not too bad. Exactly, love that mindset, Tom. Um, you know, it's great, and yeah, it's 
as always, guys, you know, lots of these rules, lots of the things we're talking about today. You know, if you are listening on, uh, you know, uh, Matt Malarkey podcast or you're watching on YouTube, you know, maybe some of this stuff might change. Um, uh, you know, so definitely look at the rules, like, uh, you know, in terms of where you're going. But, you know, that's what we're here for. Uh, the whole Evertrek team, all of the Yetis, we're here to make these trips happen. So drop us an email, info at evertrek.co.uk. Use the messenger on the website, um, you know, and we'll try and help as much as we can. But, Dave, yeah. Great stuff, mate. Uh, another great live. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts before we finish? I know we covered a lot. No, that's pretty much it, to be honest. I just think, um, yeah, I need to go and sort of, uh, I need to go like, blow my ears out eh? because, like I said, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hearing everything for one, but um, that's just one of the risks of travel. But no, it's, um, yeah, no, it's been amazing. Good to be back. Loving the two, the TTIs again. You know, it, um, yeah. it was nice to have a little break over Christmas, but, you know, even on my breaks, I still find myself staring at a computer thinking, what, what's wrong? Are we live? Are we live? <laughs> you know, until someone comes up and goes, come on, you idiot. Let's go. <laughs> exactly. yeah, no, it's been great. Good. Yeah. Um, but like, we, we've got another great one next week. Um, we've got something exciting actually next week. So yeah, do tune in for that one. Um, yeah, we've got something that um, maybe can make travel a little bit easier for you. But yeah, we'll be back next week. Um, so do tune in. Um, as we just said, though, anything you need, just reach out. And we'll, uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. Awesome. Cheers, guys. Bye.